All right. So the agenda for today, I'm going to do the intro. I'm going to tell you what hacking is. I'm going to give you some resources for practice. I'm going to explain what a capture the flag competition is, break down the different challenge categories. I'm also going to show you how to set up your hacking environment. It's going to be a pretty quick demo, but I'll be going into detail, giving you context beforehand so it makes a bit more sense when we do get to that demo. This should take about 20 minutes. That's what I've timed it out to be. So yeah, and then next Keith is going to give us an introduction to OSINT, which is shorthand for open source information and technology. So he's going to tell us what it is, who uses it, different OSINT techniques that are out there. Um, Google dorks, which is a really funny name and it's a really crazy thing. And he's going to give us a demo of Google dorks, which is an OSINT technique. So what is hacking? Uh, my definition for what hacking is, is it's basically the subversion of an intended purpose or workflow. So I don't know, let's say a company comes up with a process to help uh, user experience. Well, a hacker would, whether or not it's a software thing, they would find a way to use that purpose in a way that it wasn't intended to be used. Um, there's plenty of uh, real life, like, it's it's like the line hacking type stuff. So like uh, Disney World, those speed lines that you could go through, there's an entire like documentary about how people used to hack those lines so that they would, <laughs> so that they could get like 100 rides in in a day instead of eight, you know, because those, those lineups are like an hour and a half long. Um, so hacking is is just finding a way to subvert the way things are supposed to happen. It's using a technology in a way it's not supposed to be used. It, it could be hardware, software, or even people, um, like social engineering. So where does it happen? It happens on computers, it happens on phones, happens on websites, programs like software. Um, media gets hacked all the time. Movies get you know uh, pirated and then post, uh, posted online for free. Music, same thing, TV, same thing. Video games get cracked so that you don't have to buy them. Um, and then they get posted online for free for people to use. People get hacked through emails. Um, you know, there's all kinds of attacks that happen through that. And people get hacked. So people get manipulated. That's It's usually referred to as conning, you know, getting conned. Um, but the industry term for it is social engineering. Uh, one thing I do want to note, though, in, you know, we're the Ethical Hacking Club. We don't promote any illegal things like downloading pirated software. That kind of stuff is illegal. So don't do it. Uh, also keep in mind, if you are doing that kind of stuff, that anything that is free out there is not actually free. Um, if there's, there's always some kind of invisible string attached. If a hacker spent all that time pirating a movie or cracking a video game to put it online, they didn't do it because they're good people. They did it because they're probably infiltrating your computer if you download it. Um, but yeah, so that's just a little disclaimer. Free products aren't free. We're the product if it's free. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, one thing that, you know, if you're going to get into hacking, you're going to need to get pretty familiar with is the command line. Um, today, we're not really going to get on to the command line too much. I'm just showing you kind of what it looks like. The two pictures there, uh, this one that says, that says Kali desktop, that's uh, the terminal on Kali Linux. Um, so this is what kind of a Linux shell might look like. Um, it might not look exactly like that. This is a specific kind of Linux shell. This is the command prompt. I'm sure you've seen that before. Lots of people open it up and pretend they're hackers. But you can do lots of hacking from the command prompt. Um, every computer has some kind of a terminal or a shell. Um, in Mac, it's called a terminal. In Linux, it's called a terminal or shell or bash. Bash stands for born again shell. Um, CMD is your command prompt on Windows. PowerShell's on Windows. So the compo components of the uh, the shell is usually directories. That's something that you're looking at. Like right here, this is the C drive, the user's directory, and I've blacked out the user just because privacy. Um, commands are the things you type into the command line. Usually there's parameters that you add with the command, so the command has context as to what it's supposed to be doing. And scripting is a way of automating all those different commands and uh, getting something more advanced going. So another thing that you're going to need to get familiar with is virtual machines. Today we're going to be downloading virtual machines to get your hacking environment started. 
Um, just to note for you guys is you don't actually have to, like, you don't have to be running Linux to be a hacker. You can hack on Windows. You can set up your own hacking environment, all that kind of stuff. The only reason why we recommend getting started with a virtual machine is because it comes pre-packed with tons of different tools, and it's 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 good for you to learn another operating system and learn how that works. Um, and it can be really tricky to set up a hacking environment in Windows if you're if you're not super tech savvy yet. Uh, like, yeah, I won't get into that quite yet. So a virtual machine is basically running a computer inside your computer. Um, as this picture shows, right, this Windows machine is running a Linux and a Mac within it. Uh, Mac virtual machines are a lot harder to set up. Like if I was if I was to run a Mac VM on my Windows desktop, it you know I would need another Mac in order to do that, and that can be pretty complicated. But it's really easy to get another Windows VM on your Windows machine or Linux on your Windows machine, um, Linux VM, or a Mac, or like if you're running a Mac, you can get Linux VM on your Mac, or a Windows VM on your Mac, that kind of thing. It, you know, it's just, uh, there's, there's some caveats with the more complex situations, but uh, generally how it works is you have your computer, you have your operating system like Windows or, or Mac, and then you have this hypervisor software that um, basically interfaces between your operating system and the guest operating systems, uh, which could be Linux or whatever it is, whatever the VM is. Uh, today, we are going to be working with VirtualBox, but there's also VMware. Uh, personally, this is my bias. I prefer VirtualBox because you can do a lot more. It's just simpler to do like your, your networking and stuff like that, uh, your VirtualBox networking, like if you want to have a little mini lab. I'll show you mine. Um, this is what my virtual box looks like. I've got all these different VMs within it. They're all within their own little network. And I set up like attacker machines and victim machines that I attack. Um, and they can all communicate with each other. So that's, that's the nice thing about virtual box. I just like the way that the, the networking works on it. So we recommend virtual box. That's how we're going to be showing you today how to do it. Uh, but each has their strengths, and depending on what your computer has enabled, you might need to enable virtualization. The way to check for that is to open up Task Manager on your computer. Um, so if you have never opened Task Manager before, just hit the Windows key, search, and then type in Task Manager. It should bring it up just like this. You're going to go to, oh, it actually probably looks like this when you start. So when it pops up like this, you're just going to click more details, go to performance, and then, you know, you hit your CPU and on the right, you'll see virtualization. And in my case, it's enabled. If it's disabled, we'll coach you on how to fix that. <laughs> but that's, it's not simple. It's not usually that simple. Uh, it, yeah, we'll, we'll talk to you about that if that's, if that's the case. If it's enabled, hurrah, you can do it. You don't have to worry. Okay. So um, the hacking environment that we're going to use, it's uh, pre-configured operating systems. Their operating system images, Kali Linux, and Parrot OS. Um, Parrot OS is, just has less tools in it, so it's a little smaller. Kali Linux has a lot of tools. It comes packed with more than you'll ever need. Um, personally, I prefer Kali Linux. I like the look of it. And so that's what I'm going to be showing you how to, how to download today. Um, but yeah, like I was saying before, you can hack on any OS, you just have to have the right tools and, uh, the more proficient you are, you know, when you eventually become elite hacker, you're going to have the skills to be able to hack on any operating system. That's called living off the land, by the way. Okay. So those beginner resources, I'm also going to convert this slideshow to a PDF and drop it in the past meetings channel, um, after this meeting is over. Um, good starting resources would be Hack the Box Academy, Try Hack Me, and Pico CTF. They're geared towards beginners. Um, Hack the Box has some extremely advanced stuff in it. Um, but if you go to this, HTB Academy, you can start with the free stuff. I can't stress that enough. Don't buy anything yet. If you're just beginning, start with the free stuff. Work on that. Finish what you've started before moving on. Um... Try Hack Me is really good too. These ones are basically tied, uh, in my opinion. Pico CTF would be like the next 
after you start playing with these. But you can do any of these. Um, and then our challenges. So they might not necessarily be like, like you know, the less points, the easier they are. The, the more points, the harder they should be with our challenges. Um, so start the ones with the smaller points. And I'll show you what our website looks like in just a second. So I'll click that. I'm going to interrupt you for one second. Um, Hack the Box Academy does have a student rate for McEwen students because I didn't get us approved as a university. Good to know. So Hack the Box Academy. That's awesome. So if you do end up wanting to buy a subscription, um, contact us and we'll help you get that subscription worked out with a student discount. Thanks. Uh, thanks for mentioning that. Okay. Um, yeah, sorry. Oh, no worries. So this is our, our challenge website, Club A's challenge website. Uh, it's basically just an ongoing CTF with no start time and no end time. Um, what you're going to do is log in. Or wait, I'm already logged in. You're going to register. Uh, you'll put your username, your email, your password, that kind of stuff. Normal registration things. Just give me one second to log in. So I'm going to log in under my account. So once you log in, um, there's a scoreboard, there's the list of users, and then there's the challenges. So this is where you're going to go to hack things. Um, so when I said like there's the different points, that's what this is. The 25, like that's this one's worth 25 points, this one's worth 50, this one's worth 100. So if it's 100 and all these are pretty low, that means it's pretty crazy. Um, these ones should all be pretty straightforward, the, the, the five point ones. So give it a shot. See if you can hack them. No worries if you can't. Um, we have a ticket bot on our Discord server to for you to, you know, submit a question, um, and and one of us execs will help you out with that. So yeah, get signed up for this and play with it as much as you can, and it should be good. Okay, so what is a, a capture the flag competition? Well, as I was just showing you, there's challenges. When you solve a challenge, you should find a flag. And a flag usually looks something like this. Um, it might not have, like, you know, the curly braces and stuff, but it's usually pretty distinctly a flag. It looks something like that. So it's just a piece of text that you copy and you paste into the challenge submission um, page. And what the challenge submission thing looks like is this. So you'd paste the flag into here and hit submit. So that's how that looks. So you solve the challenge, get the flag to get points, and then the leaderboard shows you how you're doing and how everyone else is doing. And usually there's a time frame. So if you're doing a CTF, you're gonna have to make sure that you manage your time properly. Uh, and we'll give you plenty of tips on how to like navigate a CTF properly. But they are tons of fun. There's a reason why lots of people do CTFs. Um, so the, the the challenges of a CTF are usually broken down into, I think it's six categories. Um, open source information and technology, which basically means that you're finding flags somewhere on the internet. Something that's publicly available on the internet. So it could be Googling for information. It could be, I don't know, a satellite tracker. It could be like a Bitcoin chain, because you can actually look at that kind of stuff. So that's what open source information and technology is. It's a super broad field. This graphic is made by the SANS Institute, which is a cybersecurity institute. And it just shows you like what can be considered open source information. This is just one category or like one like example of o OSINT. There's so much of it. The next category would be forensics. Uh, that would be basically you're looking through data um, like a GitHub repo or like, you know, a version history um, or a file or a file system. You're looking for hidden flags within something like that. So it's digital forensics. That gets a little complicated. You might have, you won't really have to worry about that if you're a beginner. Um, crypto, it's cryptography. So you're, you're, you're breaking encryption schemes. Um, also, if you're a beginner, don't worry too much about that yet. You'll, you'll see, you'll encounter encryption. Um, some of our challenges are geared towards encryption. And it's basically breaking encryption, breaking weak encryption to find flags. So another category would be web. That's basically hacking websites. So it's finding vulnerabilities in web applications or websites like, uh, you know, 
bypassing login portals, that kind of stuff. Um, web can get crazy. It can get crazy pretty quick. Um, actually, I should say every single one of these can, can get pretty crazy pretty quick, but uh, reversing is reverse engineering. And so it's like taking a program and you run it through a static or dynamic reverse engineering program. Like you run this program through another program to reconstruct what the source code might look like so that you can find the flags within that program. So that can get kind of crazy too. That's an entire like career is learning how to reverse engineer. It can be crazy. Um, but it's also tons of fun. It's also as simple as just looking through like really easy code, like a bash script or a Python script. Um, yeah. And then the, the final category of a CTF would be exploit. So it's, it's basically getting a running program to break or to leak a flag um, or escalate privileges. So that might not make any sense if you've never encountered that kind of a thing, but uh, yeah, I won't get too in detail with that one just because that, that can get pretty verbiage pretty quick. Okay, so a recap of what we just talked about. You can hack on any computer. Uh, you just got to get your right tools together. Um, using a Linux VM is, is a lot of hackers' preferred starting point, depending on what you're hacking. Um, and then these are great resources to start hacking. And these are the six categories, OSINT, Forensics, Crypto, Web, Reverse, Exploit. And if you have any questions, Google's your best friend. There's a reason why we're our first thing we're going to teach you is Google skills because Google's your best friend. Okay, so I'm going to stop this recording, and I'm going to start the recording for how to install VirtualBox and how to install Kali Linux. So just bear with me for a second while I get this set up on my end.